if you are like me, you're sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, <laughs> what, what, how do I react to this? Um, it was such a powerful, powerful performance. And um, I can tell you that I have many, many thoughts rushing through my head. Um, in addition to a variety of positions I've held through the years, I am also a mother and a grandmother and a wife and a, a person who lives in a community that has much violence. And um, so all, all those pieces of my life were engaged. But the little bit I want to share with you for five minutes is it, it relates to the work that I've done since I left the Supreme Court, and that is in the field of restorative justice. Because this, this presentation, this wonderful piece tonight, sparks so many memories that I have. And one of the things that I do in that work of restorative justice is I work with survivor family, family members um, of homicide victims, surviving family members, who at some point in their lives want to meet face to face with the murderer. Um, and I have the opportunity to walk with those survivors, sometimes 10, 15, 20 years after the homicide, and, and listen to their stories and help them communicate with the murderer and his family or her family to ask about what happened and why it happened and what were the details. So I have to say that so many of the emotions expressed tonight uh, were things that I've heard from both the families of those who have committed violent crimes and those who have <laughs> suffered the violence. And often those families are the same families. Many families have suffered violence um, in their families and then had people in their families go out and commit violence. And I just want to share just a few moments of stories. One of the things that really struck me are the little details that he remembered as he expressed his life. Those moments, are those special moments with his son, those moments that did this action make a difference? Did, because of what I did here, cause him to, to do this unimaginable crime? And yet there's really no answer as to why his son engaged in that behavior. Um, one of the people I've worked with is a, is a woman whose a, husband was a police officer and he was killed in the line of duty. She was a young mother at the time her husband was killed. And she remembers every detail of her life the days before it happened, the night the, the lieutenant came, being called to the hospital, the smells and the sounds in the hospital. And one of the stories she tells is going into the emergency room where her husband was laid out with his chest cut open, blood flowing out of his body, and they were trying to revive him, and she knew he was dead. She kissed the top of his head and walked out, and walked across the, the hospital floor, thinking, how, how could this have just happened? I just kissed him goodnight. I just told him to be careful. I have to tell our children. And hearing squeaking noises, and looking down and seeing her tennis shoes tracking his blood down the hallway. Now, 30 years later, if she walks across a gym floor and her, and her shoes are wet and squeak, she's back there thinking of her husband. I can tell you I've talked to victim after victim after victim, and they recount these details. And, and I have to tell you that when you talk to offenders or people who've committed violent crimes or their family members, in particular their family members, we often forget about those family members. Or we all watch TV and think, that family member, is what, what was that parent doing? Why did that parent pay attention? And I think this really calls for us all to understand we are all community. All these people are part of us. And when things happen in our midst, whether it's the violence whether it's, it's committing violence or having violence committed, such as happened to his wife, those things ripple through all of us. We can't live in our house and say, well, that happened in that part of town, and that happened in that school, and not realize it happened in our community, our neighbors, our friends. And it will ripple, continue to ripple through if we don't find ways to support those who've been hurt. And so I, I look forward to the discussion with all of you tonight. I think that, that, you know, one of the things I have to say that crossed my mind tonight is I've worked with um, a couple whose son was brutally murdered, wrong place, wrong time. His head was, you know, he was shot, brutally murdered. And he talked about sitting in the courtroom, and I've had a number of parents talk about that. 
and the parents of the victim on one side and the parents of the offender on the other. And he has said, I would rather be sitting where I was sitting than to be sitting across the aisle for the, to be those parents whose son committed that crime. And I have to tell you that both sets of parents and hundreds of people that know both of them walk through that violence and, and, and we have a choice whether we try to heal and learn from it or whether we pretend like we're not part of it and it will just continue. So I wish you well in your discussions tonight. Thank you. Thank you.